Say yeah, your intro baby. Music. That's it, bro. That's it. <laughs> Live, you guys here with Jason Ackerman. How you doing, bro? I am great. Got some coffee. Got some pork in me. I don't know if that might have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How that's gonna come across? <laughs> but hey, it's the truth. Too soon to be dropping that. Right. Um, so what we have here is uh, the Thunder Bro crew in house. Correct. You, Dave, Nate. Nate, yep, our magical video guy. And uh, we just want to welcome you to the Ice Age HQ. This is really awesome. Thanks, man. I love it. I love seeing, I told you, small businesses. Nothing gets me more fired up. Some people like sports. Some people like pornography. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I like entrepreneurship. 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 Something like that. One of those nouns. Yep. Um, but... Man, I, I guess this is a podcast that's a little bit ad-lib. We didn't talk about, we didn't ha really have this schedule. I just put it on the schedule potentially today, but Dave's out teaching the class, uh, teaching all the, the employees here out in the parking lot, running them through a workout. At the end of their week, we only work four days, four 10-hour shifts. Oh, that's unique. Yeah, so that so this is, a, this is their Friday. <laughs> so this is the end of their work week. Yep. They, do they have to come back to work after this workout? Um, no, they just cleaned up the whole kitchen, so they're, they're good, they're good. And they're out for the weekend. Yep, three days. What made you come up with that idea of a four-day work week? Well, one of the things, there's a couple of different aspects. One of them is just utilities, and I never thought of this, but Memo brought it up, and on, for one day a week, we don't have to turn on the ovens and get those heated up, run, fill the sinks with water, run the dishwasher, like it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you do high volume like we do, it adds up over time. So we just, we heat up the ovens four days a week instead of five days a week. The, how it kind of carries over is that if you have these guys work an eight hour shift, by the time they start work, get going, take their break, then we train them every day at 11 o'clock, then they eat lunch and they get another break in the afternoon. There's only small little bits of hours or time where they can get stuff accomplished. When it's a 10 hour day, there's another half hour in each work session, and that's really what we need. So it, we get more productivity out of those 40 hours than we do if they're spread over five days. I want to work here. Huh? That sounds great. Right. And I think from an employee perspective, those two hours, do, you know, it doesn't really matter. You're up anyway. You're already at the office. I'd rather be here for a little longer but get that extra day. Yeah, third day off every yep. week. So yeah. when you have – who, who I'm going to interview you. Sure, go Is ahead. Is that cool? Yeah, All course. right, because I wasn't sure because, you know, I've got some podcasts. You've got so much going on. You just threw these headphones on at me and hit record. Yeah. But but I'd like to ask you some questions. Go ahead, man. All right. So, Open book. so you, you go by Paleo Nick. Yeah. I mean, I say I'm uh, formerly known as Paleo Nick. But what, do you, what do you go by now? Just, I mean, Nick, Paleo Nick still, but, you know, that all kind of came from just uh I launched a website in 2011, June 6th, 2011, called paleonick.com. At the time, I was uh, involved pretty good with Steve's Club. I know you're probably familiar oh, with that. Oh, Steve Liberati. Yeah. Good, good friend, yes. Yeah. So he helped me come up with the name. You know, we were thinking nickcooks.com or paleonick, and he said, go with paleonick, boom. So that was it. And then we had a pretty dedicated uh, motto or vision of, only releasing paleo foods on the website. So we did about 350 videos. It's pretty strict paleo, right? Teaching people how to cook that way. So was that there was there food involved at the time to buy? <coughs> was it more? There, no, uh -uh. So it was, it was more just, educational. Yeah, it was. We had I had. Um, well, it all started with CrossFit. They came to Aspen, Colorado, in 2011. January, February for the X Games to see how they ran, um, see how the X Games ran the live feed on ESPN because CrossFit was going to mimic that at the games that year, 2011. So we got to know Rory McKernan, uh, Heber Cannon, and J Greg Hammond from the Concept 2. Oh, Greg. Yeah. So Greg, Steve, and Heber have all been on the Best Hour of Their Day podcast. Oh, sick. Yeah. But I find it kind of funny, Steve Liberati, super humble guy, but 
forces you guys to use your own name in the company. You got Steve's Club, and you got Paleo Nick. Right. Very ego driven. I guess. Steve. Yeah. But I tell you what, just like coming here and seeing how amazing this is, every time I'm in a Whole Foods around the country and I see some Steve's Club food, I get a little excited because I was one of the first people buying that. The yeah. jerky was coming to the Way box. Back, right? Yeah, we're selling Paleo it to the members. And, yeah. yep. What do you get? What's going on over there? No, this is my journal, but I was going to take some notes. What do you? What do you, what uh, language do you write in? S- cursive. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I don't think most people know how to write cursive anymore. I know. Dude. So they pulled it. So yeah, I went there. Yeah, 2011 launched the website, and then kind of got a pretty a, a decent following from on like a Paleo Nick Instagram account, you know. And and as Ice Age has evolved. I have I don't really do much to that anymore. Like I used to be dedicated, that was my thing. Then this evolved, and now you know I don't even really get time to post anything on Ice Age meals anymore. Um, but you have a, I mean, I think people don't realize sometimes what a big operation is happening behind the scenes of of many small businesses. But we walked in here. I mean, you have a huge location, twenty employees. You're running around. It's, yeah. it's just cranking. So I, I think it's really awesome. Before you got involved with your own thing, you were telling me you were the chef for Lance Armstrong. Mm. W- what was Lance's favorite meal? Mm, he mainly ate pasta. Pasta, I loved corn. Did you go on the tour with him? The tour to France? No, I went on the tour of Leadville with him. I went over, He was. it was when he was taking a break and doing, um, he was taking a break and getting into mountain biking. This was 2008, so I... It was kind of crazy. I had done some previous work as a private chef in this house that he was now using. Some friends of his kind of rented it to him or lent it to him or I don't know that arrangement. But nonetheless, when he was going to be there and needed a chef, the property manager of that house knew me and we had a good relationship. So she connected us and for about, I don't know, two years, I would cook for him when he came to town. Um but went over, actually traveled with him to Leadville when he did his first Leadville 100, which is a 100-mile mountain bike race above 10,000 feet. Right, you know I about think that one? Yeah, you guys yeah, in Colorado. No, yeah, Matt Chan has done it. Yep. Saw that recently. Yeah, I think he's training for it again this year. What? <sighs> but that was really how I found Cross. I mean, that and, and almost at the exact same time, we moved into a house, and my neighbor had his box or had his garage as an, a certified CrossFit affiliate way back in the day. So, so that's so when you first got introduced to CrossFit. Yes. Yep. And, and Lance was essentially doing CrossFit in this little, they'd go ride bike for like five or six hours, train on the bike, and then they'd come home and do these short little workouts, like literally 20 minutes or less. And he had this guy named Peter Park, who was from oh, Santa Barbara area, like a mountain biking trainer pro guy. They're teaching him how to put on some weight for mountain biking and all that. But he was running them through these workouts. And then I noticed that my neighbor had a pair of rings hanging in his garage and a plyo box. And I was like, is this CrossFit? He's like, yeah, come on over. You know, he's like inviting me for a workout and um, went and did a workout and really never looked back. So what was the transition then? You find CrossFit. You've got the culinary skills already. You said you cooked in Alaska and that was challenging. But... But where does that evolution come from? Hey, I like CrossFit. I know they are in heavily invested in this paleo yeah. lifestyle and a little bit of zone at the yeah. time. Where where does the idea of I'm going to teach these guys how to cook come from? Yeah, so it was, I mean, basically at the same time, other clients who I was cooking for, I had a couple families that I would cook for two or three nights a week, right, like weekly, right? And they and and they would start getting blood tests. You know, that's twelve years ago. It's so only becoming kind of popular now with you know a little bit more mainstream, right? But they were getting blood tests back then, saying I'm allergic to this and I shouldn't eat this and that. And all of it was falling in line with this paleo. I was reading the Paleo Diet at the time, the original Loren Cordain book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Paleo Diet for athletes, <laughs> or the Paleo Not even just the straight, the straight the Paleo okay. Diet yep. first edition. Um, so then I just kind of put two and two together and, and started to transition my offerings from just cooking anything you guys wanted to a little bit more of a paleo thing. And that just evolved 
over the years. Is that a lucrative career, cooking for people? Um, I mean, it just a lucrative. I, I guess you could say yes. As far as like desirable or successful, or it all depends on who you are. For me, once I started a family, my my view of the career changed drastically. Right, instead of me being home with my own family each night, I was hanging out with a different family. Right, you know, so I had. You know, I had client. I had one guy. They would pay me, they'd pay me twelve hundred and fifty dollars a day, and leave a twenty percent tip when they let when they paid their bill. How many meals are you cooking for twelve hundred dollars a day? I would, and that was only lunch and dinner. That was two meals a day. They had a staff of about ten people at their house. So you had to feed them as well. Yep. But I mean, at at some point, it's cheaper to just cater in. I mean, I, they're not really about cheap. They're just about who can give us the best quality. And I always, that was on my business card. Like, quality is never an accident. So, I mean, fr- from my my perspective, I don't need a lot as far as fancy clothes, fancy yeah. cars. But I always say, if money was no object, I would have a cook. Mm. But yeah. he- here's what I'll say. Anyone out there, can have their own cook if they just order Ice Age meals. Boom, there it is. <laughs> such a good plug. It's such You're a good like, plug. And I'm not even, but I'm not even trying <laughs> to plug. So let's run through the numbers real quick. How much is 48 Ice Age meals? Because that's your biggest box. Yeah, maybe like 550 to 600 bucks. Okay, so s- I'm going to do some quick math. Yeah. What, unless you know I can it do already. it. You tell me. What do you want to know? What's, what does that come out to per meal? Well, if it's 10 bucks, it'd be 480. So 12 bucks a meal. Okay, so $12 a meal, call yeah. it. Now, you're going to eat, say, three a day. You get your breakfast meat scramble. Then you get tri-tip for lunch. lunch, And then maybe... Hooli chicken. Hooli, I love the hooli chicken. I thought the hooli the chicken fooled me at first because it's got like a little red tint to it. Yeah. So I thought it was pork, but it's it's del- it's like the softest, moist moistest chicken, chicken you'll ever get. Yeah, cool. So, and, and here's the deal. I love Ice Age Meals. We have a relationship, but I wouldn't be promoting you as much as I am if I didn't truly believe in it. I love the meals. Cool. But Appreciate for $36, it. even if you have two people living at, at the house, that's $72. Yeah. Even or if you 10 people, it'd be 360 yeah, bucks. Get your, go on the Ice Age Meals website. Get yourself 48 meals and you're good to go. You don't need, you don't need your own cook to stay in age. Right. So y- y- where is that next step? You, you, you find CrossFit. Paleo's going on. I'm teaching people how to cook. When does it become, now I'm going to start shipping these, this food out there? Mm, that happened in 2014. And a couple things kind of led up to it, but I was living in, I had moved to Southern California to help open a gym, CrossFit South Bay. They had a second location, huge undertaking. It's kind of a, a long story, but I... I owned Aspen CrossFit with the guy Eric Larson. We were partners in Aspen when the CrossFit crew came there. That's how we met them. Heber shot a cooking video because he found out I was a chef. Then they published it, and it was popular. So they wanted more. So then we did 12 videos per year from 2011 to 2018. But it sounds like even though you were (laughs) heavily invested in cooking, you were kind of trying to leave that field if you were opening crossfits and yeah i was i mean that was just i don't know it was kind of a i was just obsessed dude i was obsessed with crossfit, with CrossFit yeah well, what what is a bigger passion for you crossfit food. or cooking food, food yeah so even and i love i love working out i just don't have the i mean i don't know it's a discipline thing i guess right but i i still love i mean if i do a workout man i just love it as much as the first time i really do a- as a chef <coughs> are you a chef or a cook I don't. I would say I'm a cook. I don't I'm know a what cook, do. and then a chef like leads a team. So I mean, I do lead these guys, but Memo's the he's the main man. If you needed me to lead like a line in a restaurant to serve dinner to 300 people through two turns in a night, like that's more of a chef position, I think. Why? But why are chefs notoriously insane? Because you got to be, I don't know, you got to be insane to do what it takes to be a chef. You I mean, really do. I was afraid of the chef at the restaurant I worked at, Dante's Riverview Restaurante. That's what it went by in um, Peekskill, New York. Hot, very upscale Italian place. 
But Dante, who was the owner and head chef, and then um, uh, the the other guy's name had like a very Italian name, like Santiago. There was oh. something along those lines. I'll, I'll think of it. But he was n- he was crazy, and he would scare. We were teenagers, and he would just scream at us. <laughs> and then you know the the dishwashers and whatnot are yelling at us in sp- in Spanish. It was pretty crazy, but it was fun times. So. Yeah, and they'll throw stuff. I mean, yeah, I've seen, I've s- dude, I had the first, I mean, if we want to take it way back, I started washing dishes when I was 14 years old, and this lady, Susan, she was the chef, and she would freak out and throw stuff and just spaz, and it, w- it was all because they were unorganized, they didn't have prep lists, and they'd just kind of wing it on a daily basis, and the restaurant was great, but I learned so much from the process because she eventually quit. She had to because she was going to die. She was seriously so freaking out. Yep. And then a new guy came in and he organized everything, made prep lists and checklists, and I saw that whole process. So um I've I've been exposed to it, but I've also been encouraged to never do that because that sucks, man. You don't want to be on the other side of it. But but since cooking is your passion, is it more fun for you to cook with healthy foods, or would you rather Cook to taste, and not that you can't have both. I think both. That's I think that's really my wheelhouse. But you like clearly leave out ingredients because we're paleo. In other words, we're not seeing pastas. Mm-hmm. We're not seeing. You know, could you make a killer pizza? But you're not going to put it out there because it's not pizza, Nick. Yeah. It's paleo, Nick. Well, pizza, Nick, is actually that sounds pretty good to me. I own that. I'm about <laughs> to buy the uh, domain <laughs> URL. <laughs> That's a funny story, but I, you know, we do typically on Friday nights we do pizza, we do pizza night. Where you know, at home or here? Yeah, at home. And I taught my wife to make pizza dough. You know, we've been married sixteen years, and we've we actually have a pizza pan that has every cut of every pizza we've eaten in sixteen years on it. You know the little markings on yeah. the pan. I'll show you when you come to my but house. Is there any chance we can make pizza night? On well, Thursday? she was actually <laughs> going to make pizza tonight. I mean, no. she still will. She's no, no. getting ingredients. I, I will tell the another pizza and steak. Does well, that sound like a good? I mean, deal? it sounds great. But I have been very strict paleo since linking up with you, and you've made it so easy. You know, in the past with CrossFit, I'm involved in paleo. You know, I've, I've heard the lectures just like you have from Coach Glassman, and. Very quickly, paleo can become what I would say bastardized. Mm. You know, it's like rice is involved, and we'll yeah. talk about that because I know you guys have rice, but dark chocolate, tequila. You know what I mean? It becomes yeah. a very gray area. Yeah, the NorCal margarita it's and the yeah. So what I like about Ice Age meals is super simple. I know I'm getting good quality, but I also have that confidence that I'm staying paleo. Yep. So you you get started paleo, Nick. When does it become Ice Age meals, and when again does the the shipping yeah. become a part of the business and I kind of keep trailing off. But where I was going with that was when I was in Aspen, I trained a guy named Warren Liechtenstein. He paid us to do private lessons for him, and he's a big investor in this group called Steel. I think he's the head of the company, Steel Partners. Well, he had mentioned at the time that he wanted, you know, he asked me if I'd be willing to move to L.A. to help him open this new model, which he called the Hub Model, where it was like a CrossFit gym, but then also had yoga and spin class and Pilates, and he wanted a tutoring wing for kids so they could exercise and be tutored and, you know, their schoolwork. And it wasn't right for me at the time, but then, you know, a couple years down the road, I ended up actually making that move um, to Southern California and helping with this program that, or with this gym that was now, you know, two years closer to actually happening. Um, well, in that process, I, I launched, you know, in the meantime, I launched paleonic.com. It was a subscription-based website at the time, and it became very popular in, like, 2013, 2012, 2013, through just exposure on CrossFit. And that was really a big time for CrossFit, too, I think, wouldn't you say? I think Five, that six was years ago. probably the peak. The I mean, peak, obviously, yeah. it's still growing, but I think for many people, that was, like, the apex of CrossFit. The games were hot. Yep. Seminars were hot, and especially seminars. Yeah, I think it was a great, great time to be alive in the CrossFit world. Yep. So, so through that, I was actually able to, le- you know, to go off on my own. I was I was running this website and helping to open this gym at the same time. Um, 
I actually was on a regional team in 2013 with CrossFit South Bay and the SoCal regional and um, le- ended up leaving that, leaving South Bay and moving to Truckee, Northern California. You know, it was, it was a good experience, but we didn't necessarily love L.A. We're from Fargo, North Dakota. Like, L.A. is pretty a drastic change or difference. Um, but what happened is I established some relationships in L.A., And then in 2014, we had the opportunity. I had just moved to Truckee, uh, but had the opportunity to have a food booth at the CrossFit Games just because of the relationship with the cooking videos, I think. you know. And and that was back when they set up, what, vendors out in the parking lot. Like, did you ever go to the Home Depot Center? Oh, yeah, I was there. Every year I was there, yeah. Yeah, So, you know, we... (laughs) A lot of things kind of played in our favor, but nonetheless, we got a spot. We I reached out to all these different vendors, like uh, Rocky and Rosie's Chicken is here in Petaluma, California. They they just gave us a, a pallet, 1,500 pounds of organic chicken, you know, if we'd put their logo on our banner. I said, oh, cool, yeah, you know, whatever. So then we, you know, just reached out to all these companies and – we're able to offer a really high quality product at a, at a reasonable price. And I always was big on portions. I don't want to spend 20 bucks and get some little thing that I'm still going to be hungry after I eat it. So what happened, you know, because we got a pallet of chicken from Rocky and Rosie on the last day, we still had food that we had just cooked Sunday. The games are over and we got all this food. What are we going to do with it? So we portioned it out froze it and then I just posted on Instagram I said hey these are my new ice age meals and I just kind of made up a name on the spot so that that name just came to you just yeah I kind of combined like the paleo right idea and the frozen idea and I was like okay yeah I'll call it ice age meals didn't think too much of it and funny story is the guy who I worked for at CrossFit South Bay when I posted that the minute I posted it, he went on and bought the URL, IceAgeMeals.com. And that's why our website is IceAgeMeals.net. He oh. still has it, and he, d- and he won't give it up. So there's a bad relationship in there. I guess. I don't know why or where or how, but, you know, what happened was he didn't register it to a proxy. He just had his name. So I, I was like, what? This is taken? And I go and look, and here it's him. I was like, crap. So I reached out to him and said, hey, what's the deal? Like, blah, 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 you know, and and you're able to look when a domain is registered at the time. And I looked at that on the time signature of the Instagram post. He saw the post. He must have thought it was a clever name. And he bought the. But this was your buddy? Yeah. I mean, it was a guy who I had previously worked for. And I don't know if he was bitter because I left or I did a bad job when I worked there. But that gym ultimately ended up not working out they took man i don't know what so he still owns the dot com yeah he still owns so the is com. there anything there currently no so make sure you guys don't go to <laughs> iceagemeals.com hit up the dot net which is i mean way better yeah i mean right? yeah, who doesn't have a dot net I and mean, you got to go dot co you got to mm-hmm. go just io dot io uh, yeah i i a dot dot biz yeah well hey the cool thing is once you've established yourself it doesn't matter where you are yeah I, I found you Exactly. I didn't even realize it, to be honest. Like, I think everybody's just clicking on links these days. Yep. So you, you start sending out these meals, and, and at that point, when, when someone wants to, to buy a bunch of them, are you like, okay, I'm on to something? Did you accidentally realize you stumbled on gold? Um, I think. I mean, we had we had done a couple efforts in while we were at CrossFit South Bay where it was like, hey, it's nutrition challenge. So I was actually slanging meals out of the garage. We were like making meals in the garage. And then what during the nutrition challenge, you could buy, you know, four meals a week. So we'd go deliver them to the fridge in the gym once a week. You know, we did that a couple times. And then when Kevin Ogar got injured, he was an old friend of mine. I had, you know, worked out with and got to know when I lived in Colorado. And we did a fundraiser for him called Ogar Ribs. So then anybody who bought these Ogar ribs, the money would go towards, you know, to Kevin. Um, and that all happened right there in SoCal, right yeah, at the, another o- great the dude. OC. Throw down and <laughs> went and saw him when he was in the hospital, like a couple of days. I mean, it was crazy. But nonetheless, that had 
kind of, I was like, there is definitely an interest in this, but there was like my fit foods, my fit foods. Have you heard of that? Company? I, I remember that. Com- and they went out of business, they, right? All of the food delivery services, I, I feel like wind up going out Gone. of business. I've yeah. been, I mean, and like, just to be uh, frank and honest and open book, like this business, same thing. This is on the cusp of going out of business. Like if we have a bad month, it can be over for us. Like it's the margins are so thin and, and what happens is the the companies like we'll use kettlebell kitchen as an example they just went out of business just went out of business right and i knew andy he was one of the guys who started it he was at Cro- he was a crossfit south bay member when i moved there and i trained him a little we had a, i knew him a little bit i think he came to one of my seminars but one day he comes up to me it was like 2012 and he's like hey nick i just want to say thank you and I'm leaving to New York to start this business, I think, with his brother or something. Yeah, New York was about kitchen, you based know, out like, of the Northeast. Yeah, and I was like, what? Okay, I was like, okay, cool, man. Yeah, I didn't know much about it, but he was off to do it. And um, it's a sad story and terrible, and I don't, you know, I don't wish that on anyone. And I know they probably were grinding hard for six, seven years, and it didn't work out. But, like, what we're facing is either – big company, not even really big companies, but big investment, right? Like Kettlebell took $27 million a year before they went out of business. They took that in as an investment? Yeah. And it still put them out of business? Yeah. Wow. You know, so. You you see a lot of those companies, like Kettlebell Kitchen is one, uh, Fee is Fresh. You remember that? That was like a Southeast one that I was involved in in Florida. Is that one out of business too? I'm pretty sure. If they didn't go out of business, they severely limited where they were shipping one thing you guys do well is you can ship anywhere. Yeah, w- all 50 states. What, what separates a company like that? Because I know most of those companies, they start small, and they, they're they shipping only within a few states, you know, a few hundred-mile radius. Yeah. But you guys are going all over the country, and I'll say, we got it fast. And, th- and the challenge is with those other companies, if you want to order them, they do ship to you. It's crazy expensive. Yeah. You guys don't add a whole lot to the shipping cost. So how do you do that so well? Um, I mean, we've just kind of been committed to it from the start. Like I, when I first went to culinary school, I actually quit a month after culinary. I dropped out of culinary school after, or not a month after the first quarter. Culinary three school months. dropout, kind of yeah. like a Greece yeah. beauty school dropout. <laughs> yeah, and and I went to I went to I was like I don't know anything about computers and like I need to know that. And I kind of had a little bit of a lure, like oh I could make more money. It's going to be way easier or whatever, but. I was going to school from 7 until 2, and then I worked from 3.30 to midnight. And that was a grind, dude. That was so – so I got freaked out, whatever. But nonetheless, I went and got a two-year degree in electronic business management. So I kind of learned the – you know, it's all come into play now. I didn't know at the time. And I ultimately fell back in love with food and went and got a four-year degree in Alaska. What's your degree in there? hospitality and restaurant management um but the i guess where i was going with that is um i i learned that hey if you're going to do something online you you want to offer free shipping you have to offer free shipping like that was a thing even 10 years ago well it hits you like it feels like you've been duped when you're like, oh, 48 meals for $500. And then you go click on it and you're like, plus $75. Yeah. I'd rather you factor that into the meal cost and not – it's yeah. just like that sticker shock, if you will. Yeah, and that and that's really what we're doing. Like, that's how we approach it. We, we do charge shipping on six packs and 14 packs only to encourage people to purchase more meals, and it's really the only way that we can do it. Well, I was joking. I told you I got 24 meals – Less Free than shipping, two weeks yeah. ago, yep. but I'm saying less than two weeks ago, and I'm they're basically done. Boom. So if you're gonna order six or fourteen, just go don't to waste the tw- your time. yeah. Don't Where I mean money. even if you're only gonna have one a day, that's three weeks worth. If your significant other has one, yeah. and they last well in the freezer. Yeah. And here's my t- I was telling you earlier: four minutes with the top on, two minutes with the top oh, off. Wow. That's it. <laughs> I know. Depends. Maybe you gotta. You know, weak microwave. Maybe you need a little longer. Yeah, there's so many factors that play into it, right? How powerful is your microwave? How frozen are they? Are they 20 below or are they zero degrees? You know, yeah. 32 degrees is still frozen. So, but let's I, I let's stay on track because I keep we're trying to tell a story and we just keep getting. That's all right. We're telling. But nonetheless, we got so so I 
after that happened, I was like, wow, whoa, there is a demand for this. And I was like, frozen is the way to go. That's one of the different differentiators between us and most of the other meal prep companies that were frozen. And how that benefits the everyone is it limits food waste, both on a production level and on a consumer level. And if you do the studies on the stats for consumer waste right now, most waste happens, a lot of waste happens at production level, but cons- at the consumer level, we're currently throwing away about 40% of the food that we purchase and 50% of the produce that we purchase. So if it doesn't freeze, it goes bad faster. So you're saying, knowing I bought 24, I can put it in my freezer and come back in three months and it's still good. Right. Because there were times with Fias, for example, they weren't frozen. And if I didn't get to them within a week, yep. they were bad. And you right. would open them and it would just like, it, something would be like a little rank about them. Right. And You're and not really like craving to eat that food, right? Yeah, there's no waste with my Ice Age meals because I literally lick the container <laughs> with my tri-tip, the sweet potato, <laughs> and whatever I don't get, my dogs get. You know, it just, you they love it. They sit down. Oh, yeah, dude, dogs love our stuff. My they wife, love it. And she knows because every time I eat one, they come near me. She's like, you're giving them food, aren't you? I'm like, no, I would never do they that. They just love you. But they sit there. Let me ask you three quick hitters. Right. Tell me about the decision to add rice to your meals. Um, that was mainly two. It's it's kind of a two-edged sword, you could say. Double two birds with one stone, maybe. Sure. One was a desire for more carbs, and two from athletes mainly. Um, and two was a limited tray uh, space. So like. We're talking with Dave about trying to get a thousand calories in one meal and still have low fat. Right. So rice is an easy filler, if you will. Right. So So if you look at and it, it just goes with everything we know about nutrition, right? Like low glycemic carbs, the lower glycemic they are, the more more fiber they're going to have and the more volume there will be where high glycemic rice is pretty much. Can you think of a higher one? Would would you ever consider sweet plantains? Yeah, we've looked at that. We w- and then we actually want to do that. All like right, I want that one to be chorizo my meal. breakfast with plantains. Well, I love plantains because you almost feel like you're having dessert. I save them for the end. Yeah. Uh, so I, I when I, whenever sweet. I eat my meals that I get right now, I save the sweet potato or I save the pineapple. Like you always Ooh. save that little sweet piece. Uh, the holy chicken comes with that big piece save of pineapple. It from dessert, yeah. Yeah, and you have to save it because the pineapple gets way hotter than the rest gotta of the. Let it cool down. Yes, yeah, so right? you gotta let it cool down. Oh. So that's, that's cool with adding rice. What about the decision to have some keto meals? Um, and I'm, I mean, I'm only asking because you, you're you founded under this paleo yeah. idea. And there's nothing wrong with keto. There's a lot of positives. Yeah. I think it's a bit of a buzzword these days. People don't necessarily do it right. Just because you're ordering keto from Ice Age meals doesn't mean you're keto unless you're following it. Right. But what was that decision like? Um, that came in line with... Well, I guess just tight, ra- tightening up that last response, we can only fit so much food in our tray, and we're kind of dedicated to just having one size tray. Does that keep costs Keep it down? simple. Yeah, we don't, as far as storage, if you have a second size tray, you got to have twice as many trays and twice as many sleeves, let all me, that stuff. So let me throw one other thing in here. Yeah. Ice Age meals are in my fitness pal. Yeah. Which makes it very easy for those of you that track macros. You don't have to quick add the macros like I've done with other meal companies in the yeah. past. If you just start to type in Ice Age meals and like grass, the grass fed meal comes up. If you start to type in Huli, so if you're a tracker, Boom. super simple. Yeah, now we're starting to add um, barcodes to our sleeves so yeah, it'd be even easier. Yeah, the ones scan it. that I've had didn't have that. Yeah. But I'm sure even easier. But w- you know how it is. You get your five favorite meals, you plug it in once, and then it's always simple to right find there. again. Oh. Okay, so then on this next one, keto, we were invited. We got. I kind of had this dream when I moved to Truckee. I learned about this thing called the Best in the West Nugget Rib Cook-Off. It's the biggest rib cook-off in the world. It's here in Reno. And I want, I, we went to it, and I was like, man, this is crazy. I want to do this. And we already had these, this huge operation from the CrossFit Games booth that we you know, started in 14, and now we're you know, two, three years into it at that time. When Trump became president, he limited work visas from Canada one of the teams that normally comes to the rib cook-off 
which is really hard to get into. There's like a big list. And I had already applied for maybe two or three years at the time. They got their work visas denied late in the game. I think it was only maybe 60 days before the event that they found out they weren't going to be able to come. So the gal who runs it reached out to us because we're local and we could probably pull it off. So um, you're probably wondering where I'm going with this. But nonetheless, we got into that. So we we got we built a smoker trailer, which is really good at smoking brisket and all kinds of meats. But once we finished the event, we parked the trailer up at our kitchen. And we also had a, a lot of people asking us about keto at the time. And we had always talked about doing like a provisions line where you can just buy meat or you can just buy yams or you can just buy organic purple sweet potatoes you know um the issue with some of those is you know we can each tray we fit in the box we have to get so many dollars for that tray because what it all comes down to is shipping how fedex charges you for the weight and the volume of these meals so you can't necessarily sell a tray for four bucks that has yams in it, but you don't want to pay $15 for yams, right? So it kind of limited that from happening, but with protein, you could do it. So Because there's more value per tray. Right. There's meat in there, not, you know, produce. So it all kind of came together at the same time. This is a little bit of a provisions line, but it's also our keto line. And it will feature our new smoke house. Call it the Paleo Q Smokehouse Meals. So, so you, I've seen you go from adding rice to keto. Carnivore diet is the big buzz. Yeah. Are you considering that? Not too much. We're kind of, I mean, the heart when we started, all all of our original meals were paleos, foods in zone portions, 40, 30, 30. That was what I preached. That's what was I learned. I've done the diet. I. I'll, I'll preach it till I die. The So now we're kind of going back to that. And even in working with you guys, those macros are a lot closer to what you guys want is closer to zone diet than it is to keto or really anything else. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I'd say yeah, we're definitely close to zone, maybe a little lower fat, a little bit higher, higher protein, protein. But yeah, very close yep. to zone. So that's where that's where I see us is headed, you know, lower fat now. We got a high fat we got some zone meals. Now we'll go low fat, kind of cover all of the bases. And, you know, we talk about dropping some meals, but we worked really hard to get from our 12 original meals. Now we're at 33. Including the rice meals and the keto meals. Yeah. So 33 total. Which is your favorite? <sighs> my heart is with pastel de papa. I told you that one is one of my yeah. favorite. It's yeah. it's it's very close to having like a pasta dinner. Yeah, and it, and it and it really ties into this talk well because um, the fam member I told you this one family paid me twelve hundred bucks a day. It was crazy, yeah. but I'd only do lunch and dinner, and they wanted me to work seven days a week. But I had a fam, I was starting a family, and I didn't want to do tw seven days a week, so I said I'll do six days a week. And they said okay. On Saturday, can you make us this dish from our? They're from Argentina, called pastel de papa. And I was like, sure. What is it? You know. So they got me a recipe, and it's basically a what we serve. You know, it's a it's a meat mixture with Italian influence that has green olives and raisins and hard boiled eggs in it. Are there then, raisins in that? Yeah, I didn't even realize it. Yeah, you know, and then the topping. Of the traditional one is just mashed potatoes, but this ours has yams on top, so it's kind of the paleo version of pastel. That's my favorite meal, and if you're gonna try ice age meals, you got to get that one, and you got to get the lasagna, and the chicken and rice, you know. And I'll go yep. down the whole list, but they're all good. Yeah, they're all good. So I want to talk a little bit about you as an entrepreneur. At at some point, you're you're developing ice age meals. It's growing. You went on Shark Tank. Mm. Yeah. What? Wow. What? I mean, you know, I've had a couple people on the show that have been on Shark Tank. I'm friends with Ashley in the Natural Grip, who are okay. no longer doing business. I'm friends with Dale from Doc Spartan. We just we sell his grooming products on Thunderbro. Okay. What was your experience like? Oh man, mine. My experience was crazy, and I don't know how long we have. You know, we're 40 minutes into this. I'll give you just a quick little 
picture of it. But the other side of it is I don't know how much like I sh- can tell or should tell or any of that, but I'll tell what I'm about to say. Um, <clears throat> the day before I had, so this was 2016, it was about June of 16 was when I went to film and we aired in September. I remember I traveled a lot for CrossFit seminars, just being in a hotel room. Friday nights was my thing. Shark Tank, i chill out. No I was way. like, holy shit, you know, Bailey with Nick's on yeah. Shark Tank. Yeah, yeah, it was nuts. But, you know, if you back up a little bit, that spring we were hired to do the regional catering in Portland for the Northwest region with, um, you know, Lori and Curtis. Yeah, Bowler. yeah. Yeah, Curtis Bowler is the one that hired me for CrossFit. Ooh. Oh, cool. So, nonetheless, uh, w- so I take a team there from here. Where I'm living in a camp. I got a pop-up camper living in an RV park with my buddy Tony and another guy, Nick. Um, and we're cranking out tons of meals. And we have a booth up there s- promoting Ice Age meals. And at the same time, I'm getting calls from shark tank to do these interviews over the phone to find out if i'm you know going to be on the show or a candidate or whatever so it's like i'm sleeping maybe three or four hours a night in a camper cranking out food super stressed out rented like an incubator kitchen in portland to pull all this off and in like the few minutes i have in the afternoon as a break i'm shopping you know going through restaurant depot on the phone with Shark Tank doing interviews. I mean, it was just insane. But, you know, I always saw this as an opportunity. It's like, you know, they said the value of it's like a million to a million to in marketing, you know. Just being on the show. Yep. Yeah, so I was like, I got to do it. I got to do it. Um, So I I get a, you know, and at the same time, I had been doing these things called the Keep It Paleo Seminar. And I had this pitch or this poem that's an illustrated poem that I had done for several years at that time and that was my pitch and I and I took a video of it and I pitched it to him and they approved it and they said cool this is your pitch it's the only scripted part of the show you know when the people come out and right. do their thing and I was like awesome man this is great because my big thing was really just spreading the word about the paleo diet or about mainly the lifestyle right you guys seven out of ten of you watching this show are gonna die because of what you put in your mouth like listen to something that i have to say like and one of the lines is like um i'm i'm not worried about um some cheese from parma but my problem lies with big ag and big pharma they're not afraid to feed you chemicals sugar and GMOs in quantities that will surely fill out your clothes. Now, I'm sure you've all heard, but I want to forewarn, cows don't eat corn. Sure, they'll eat it when there's nothing else around, but when they do, their future lies six feet underground. Then start the hormones and countless injections to keep them alive till slaughter and fight the infections. It's kind of funny how this all works together. It's like big industries got us tied to their tether. Right, so that's in my pitch, and they approved it. I'm like, perfect, you know. <sighs> that was a big one, <laughs> but <laughs> but still um, remember it. Yeah, yeah, I know the whole, and that's only that's only part of it, right? Like, um, we well, probably repeated that, you know. I got this thing down by yeah. heart, so it's not a big deal for me. Like, perfect, and I also illustrate it. So I'm in, I'm here in that studio, sending them videos, and they're approving it. And they say, oh, but the only thing is, you got to make a chalkboard because. The whiteboard doesn't show up well on camera. I was like, okay, cool. I'll do this with chalk and a chalkboard. Um, so I'm all stoked, but also super stressed just with the business. And now I'm going to do this. And leading up to the day before I fly to LA, I get a phone call from Tyson Oldroyd at headquarters, right? Across yeah, the HQ. And I'd always done the cooking videos with him. But we typically touch base in like November, December to produce videos for January at the start of the year. And he's contacting me in June, right? Early, early June. So I'm like, hey, Tyson, what's up, man? He's like, hey, can any chance you can fly to uh, any chance you can fly to Santa Cruz tomorrow? I was like, uh, I'm actually flying to L.A. You know, what's up? He's like, well, we want to talk to you about Ice Age meals. And I'm like, oh, OK, this is crazy. Um, and I'm just, and I'm actually with my wife and we're like going to Donner Lake up in Truckee to like 
kayak out on this lake and get my mind like somewhat I'm like losing my mind at this point and I pulled over the car I remember exactly where we were in the whole conversation and I was just, but I was just blown away I was blown away I was like what do you mean he's like yeah we're interested in buying your company I was like oh okay I said well I'm flying back on Tuesday meanwhile you can't tell him you're going on sharks right he doesn't know that I'm flying back on Tuesday I can stop there on the way back right and I'm like okay uh, he's like, yeah, cool, let's do that. Let's plan that. Okay. So there was an offer. Pretend, uh, you haven't gotten this far, but yeah. CrossFit at least tells you we're somewhat interested in buying mm-hmm. Ice Age meals. Yeah, and, like, I don't – I'm not – I don't slam it down anybody's throat, but I grew up as a Christian, and I believe in God, and I feel like everything is orchestrated from above, and if if this happening wouldn't be something that would make you believe that, like – You're crazy, right? Yeah. They don't know I'm going, and I get this call, and and you know as the story transpires, we'll know more. But it's just it was just insane. So it must influence the value in which you're gonna pitch on Shark Tank. Well, just makes you know I had a comforting feeling knowing like wow, okay, cool, but also like what the heck? Like I don't know. It made things even more confusing. Right, because if you get an investor, potentially you now can't sell to CrossFit. Yeah, so how it transpires, I go there, I do, I actually, you know, it was cool because when I set up, I, I had, I shipped down a pallet with a freezer on it and a bunch of sleeves and my chalkboard that I made and had to assemble that and I had to illustrate my poem on the board and put all this stuff together and I'm right on the other side of the curtain from all the other people doing their rehearsal pitches. So I hear every pitch the whole day and I'm the last guy to go. I heard every pitch, and then I, ca- I could hear the feedback and, like, what they should do different, blah, blah, blah. So I get up there. I do my pitch, and nobody says anything. I'm done with it, and they're all just and – and In I, front and of I the sharks? No, in front of the, the rehearsal. Okay, so this is the rehearsal. It's yep. like there's, like, 30 people in there. And I'm like, that's it. it I said, that's my pitch. And they're like, oh, okay. And they're all just, like, jaw drop kind of thing, and, and they say – all they said was, if you can do that – tomorrow on or on camera this is going to be great and I was like oh perfect I can do this because I've already done it for several you know years at that time so then I have a day off that was Friday I believe <coughs> or no that I think that was Saturday I'm gonna have a Sunday off and then I'm gonna go in front of the sharks on Monday right and um I actually took Sunday and drove down to San Diego and bought some convection ovens that I, I knew were there, but I wanted to get my hands on them, kind of kick the tires. And then I stopped and stayed with my friend in Temecula, Tony Tursky. He runs Turn 2 CrossFit. And I'm doing a workout in the afternoon there, and I get out of the workout, and I have a text on my phone, and it's the producer from Shark Tank who I'd been working with, and he's like, He's like, hey, Nick, uh, can you check, can you give me a call back and can you check your email and give me a call back? And I was like, okay, cool. So I just call him right away. I didn't have my computer on me and I don't do email on my phone. It's one of my mottos. So it's a rule you live by? Just my personal email, like a Gmail address, but not my business. Yeah. So I check or I call him. He's like, hey, man, we got, we just want to let you know this guy, Eugene, he's in our legal department and he was in the crowd when you did your rehearsal and he has denied you going on the show with your pitch because he feels like some of the um, you know companies that you're potentially attacking with what you're saying are the people who will buy advertising space on ABC and he goes we've written you if you check your email we've changed your pitch this has been approved by our legal department. And if you want to go on the show still tomorrow, this is the only way you can do it. But meanwhile, you have to memorize this new pitch. Well, that wasn't even the thing. Like, I'm I'm the reasonably sharp guy where I could figure that out, kind of. Right. But I mean, what, they wrote, what they wrote was super, like, watered down and lame. I was like, no, I can't do it. So what's one line that you hated? <sighs> I don't even know because I didn't – I read it once and I was like, no, I can't do this. I'm not going to do this. He goes, the only other option you have is we'll give you one more day. You have to write your own poem. 
illustrate the poem and the words and the illustrations have to be approved by our legal department. I was like, okay, I'll do that. Give me that option. And he goes, okay, you got it. You know, just email the stuff over when you have it and I'll, and we'll pass it on and we'll get it approved. And I said, okay, perfect, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just like, I'm just like, what the heck, you know, like what should I do? And it was stress, dude. You're already in a super stressful situation. Luckily I had just worked out or I don't know how I would have handled it. But I then called Tyson. I'm like, Tyson, I can't fly. Oh, because right, because you still have to go to HQ at this point. Yeah, I'm planning to fly there on Tuesday. Well, now I have Monday to an extra day, and then I'm going to go in front of the Sharks on Tuesday. I say, my schedule has changed. I can't come Tuesday, but I can actually come tomorrow, right? So now I have this extra day in my schedule. But you're supposed to be writing the new pitch in that day. Yeah, and then you're not. I don't really think you're supposed to leave the hotel or something. I don't know, but I had already done that. I'm down in San Diego and Temecula. Um, and he goes, okay, cool. Yeah. Come tomorrow, come tomorrow. So, you know, Monday morning, they connect me with the guy who arranges travel and they got me a last minute ticket and I flew to San, San Jose and they, they put you drove on in and coach Glassman's private plane. No, no, not, not, but I get, but I did rent like a Mustang convertible. That was pretty sweet. All right. So they gave you the Hertz <laughs> upgrade. Yep. That's exactly how it works. So then God, I'm like. So I get there, and it's it's Sevon, it's Bruce, and it's Tyson. Who Bruce at the time was the CEO. Yep. Yeah, or uh, CFO. Yeah, he was money. He's a money guy. And, I, I mean, again, I don't know how much this I'm supposed to be saying, but, like, I think I'm okay with it. Like, Not it, many people listen to this podcast. You'll right. Be fine. Perfect. Um, they say, well, you know, here's what we're looking at doing in the next 16 weeks, they said, so, like, a four-month time period. We, w- we would either partner with you on like a 50-50 partnership. We would buy your business outright and hire you as an employee. Or we would um, let, you know, you would keep your company and co-pack our meals, right? We're just going to put the CrossFit sleeve on our food that we produce. So like, oh, okay, cool. This is similar to Thunder Bro. Exactly. I mean, this is a right? bit of a bigger deal than CrossFit. This is but the yeah. next evolution of this, of that conversation. No. But... Um, I was like, oh, wow, okay, cool, crazy. So did they uh, give you a dollar amount for that full buyout? No, and they didn't really even know anything about, you know, the, the volume and stuff like that, like how much we could produce or any of that. It was just kind of, it was a little bit different in that, and, and I don't know what was happening, but I think that was kind of when CrossFit changed from, you know, we're never going to sell products or push anything on people. We're only doing affiliations and teaching, and then – that kind of changed, right? I think they needed new revenue streams. Or I'm not sure what it was, but usually money is the reason people do stuff. Um, so you had two very different things going on. You know, CrossFit, who knows nothing, basically offering you potentially a buyout. Then you're going on Shark Tank, where you're about to get hammered with every question possible. Yeah, and they and they know all the the detail. Well, the sharks don't know, but you have to provide that information before you go on there, right? So they. So in, in so then at CrossFit, I'm like, okay, here's the deal, you guys. I'm actually at in L.A. going on Shark Tank tomorrow. So you're telling them this. Yeah, and this is what just happened. Like, the only reason that I ever l- really learned this stuff or had this message, my poem, my pitch, was because of was because of CrossFit, right? Like, I I. I found it, I fell in love, and then I learned about the nutrition, I fought, read journal articles, I did everything, right? Just like everybody did early on. And they say, well, hey, Nick, we feel the same way, like, that your message is our message, and we want to help you spread that message. Um, they said the only thing is if you do a deal with on Shark Tank, and your investor or investors don't line up with our investors, then there could be an issue. I was like, oh, okay. And like, we don't want a decision today, but, you know, give this some thought, and this is something that we're, we're looking to move on quickly. So I was like, man, I was like, okay, cool, guys, you know, whatever, and I split out of there. And in the meantime, like, when I'm flying, and I'm in, even in the airport waiting, I'm, like, drawing, and I'm rewriting my poem and drawing these things and taking pictures and sending them to the producer and ultimately got all that approved. And then I just, I was just like, I didn't even sleep. I didn't sleep a wink that night. I mean, you could imagine. And then I was up at like 
you know, at 4 a.m. I was out. I brought a bunch of dumbbells, or I brought two 55-pound dumbbells from the gym out into the parking lot, and I did this running uh, dumbbell complex workout to kind of stay sane. And then I even did a workout, like, right up to the minute I went on on stage. They had one company that was made. It was like Fran Denim or something. It wasn't Fran, but they made jeans for people who worked out. So they had a a 135 pound barbell as part of their setup. Oh, I remember that pitch, yeah. So I was over there, I was doing all the cleans and, you know, jerks and all kinds of stuff, just again, trying to stay sane and <sighs> hanging out with the lady who did all the craft services. She had a little kitchen at there, and I used her oven to heat up the lasagna that I served them. And I always had like a connection with people who work with food. So I'd like, <sighs> she helped a lot, but. Nonetheless, I tell my producer, I say, hey, just so you know, like, I decided I'm changing the amount that I'm going to ask for. And he's like, yeah, okay, you can do whatever you want. Just, you know. Um, so what was your, be ready to deal what with was it. your numbers pitch? What did you, what did you value the company at? Like the first, the, when we went on there, when I, when I was leaving, my decision, it was, it was either going to be 250 or 300,000 for 10% of the company. So you're talking 2.5 to $3, 3 million. million dollars. Yeah. And then what did you ultimately ask for? And then when I went on, I changed it to a million dollars for 10%. So you valued it at $10 million? Yeah. And were they just like this 3X, is... 3X, 4X. They did they think that it was reasonable or did they think that was insane? Not really. And I knew it wasn't, but I was like, I... You know, and I even told them, I said, guys, just so you know, just yesterday I flew to CrossFit headquarters and met with these guys. So you did that more so <coughs> you didn't want an investment. Not at that point. I what I mean, I don't think any sane person would make a decision like that. Did you get any offers? No. No. I mean Lori was somewhat interested and she said, Hey, if you get the CrossFit deal in writing, then I will invest, right? And I knew she saw she knew what we were doing and she saw something in it, but I felt like, you know, I mean, just in general, they're not going to go for something that's value, you know, that they're asking four times what it's actually worth. Right. Or they would have said, Hey, we'll give you a million, but for 50%. Yeah. So is there any truth to the rumor? If you go on the show at all, they take a percentage of your business. No, that was only early on in the first couple seasons. That was the deal. And then what happened, Mark Cuban actually put, a halt on that and when he went to negotiate his contract for the following season he said the only way i'll do it is if you take that stipulation out and you pay in arrears everybody who you got money from from the start so he felt like that wasn't fair yeah gotcha so you, you finished shark tank you didn't get the deal <sighs> clearly didn't the deal with crossfit never happened yeah crossfit had basically never heard another word from him radio silent and now Sound familiar? Have you ever heard anything like that? I don't know. Dave may have. <laughs> yeah, we're recording. Dave's over there. Is there another mic? Yeah, but it, we don't want Dave on here. It's a one-on-one -on -one only. One-on-one -on -one yeah, only. Yeah. <laughs> no, but not, I mean, we're at 58 minutes, so we should maybe kind of wrap it okay, up. But but just to finish it, so here's what happened. Like, I, um, I, w I was, a, it was tough, super stressful. If you would have had your pick of the five, who would you have taken? Maybe either Damon. Because he's involved in CrossFit. Just like him. I read You could have had Mark Cuban, I could hear Power telling broke. you. We'll sell these meals at the Dallas games. Yeah. Right? So you can. I don't really see this out of, you know, if I go to a sporting game, I'm going to get a big old hot dog with lots of sauerkraut and all kinds of stuff on oh, it. Oh, and by the way, Dave, we're having pizza tonight. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Yeah, it's the appetizer. Steak, <laughs> steak <a> and <laughs> then pizza. Yeah. Steak is the appetizer. <laughs> but no, so the, but but here's how it all played out. So that was in June, and then we got a two week heads up in September that we're gonna air on September 30th. They had, um, and we weren't really. We had six employees at the time. We had, I think we had, tw I don't know, twenty thousand meals or something like that. Maybe twelve thousand meals. Twelve thousand meals in stock. Um, we, I was in, cr I was in Jacksonville, doing a cr culinary ninja seminar at CrossFit Jacks on on s that Sunday. Oh, with Chris Russell. Yep. 
Um, and on Saturday, I had... Uh, no, that was on Saturday. On Sunday, I had a paleo pop-up with one of my friends who has a paleo business in Jacksonville. And this is going to air on Friday night. So I'm there with my buddy who's helping me do the seminar. The thing airs. And we it just sales just go insane. So you mentioned earlier. Insane. $2 million. Do you feel like that was accurate? I, I mean, we did it. We ended up doing a million dollars in sales within 30 days. And was that much higher than typical? Yes. Were, uh, were so a million dollars in sales, if, if that's 10,000, if, if we're getting 10 bucks a meal, which was kind of around the price range at that time, that's, we need, we need 100,000 meals to fill that, right? And then we also ran a Shark Tank special. So, so people could get meals for around seven, eight bucks maybe. Are you even making money on those meals at that point? Yeah, we were. So the thing, how it played out though was we had 12,000 meals and we needed 100,000 to fill the orders. So we went from six employees to 45 employees within three weeks. Just to fill those orders. Just and, and then it took us all the way. It took us until Christmas, until our Christmas party. It was like a huge celebration because we'd finally filled all these orders. And then we get an email saying, hey, we're going to re-air your show on the night of our Christmas party here, all of our employees. And they re-aired it and we sold a ton of food again that we didn't have. So it took you almost three months to fulfill some of those orders? Yep. And people were okay with that? Yeah, I mean, we did about, I think we did $28,000 in, like, canceled orders or returns because people didn't want to wait that long. But most people who watch the show are fans of the entrepreneurs that go on there, and they're like, yeah, I'm cool, man, whenever whenever you get it to me. And it's like, I don't know, it can, it can kind of make you or break you. Like, we definitely were not ready for that. And we had, at the time at least, there was no information out there on, like, what can we expect from this? Just some very broad and vague, you know, stats or details. But that was how it all played out. And, like, I've, you know, I've told this story a couple times in my seminar since, you know, when I, when I was doing the, I think the last one I did at Reebok CrossFit 1 in November of maybe 18, I told them that. And I was like, this is, you know, it was my last seminar. And I wrote up my poem on the board and after I did all that I, I kind of wouldn't say spilled the beans but I just shared the story um, and yeah crazy alright last couple of questions we crazy. gotta wrap this up you have a journal you have a book on monks you've got an agenda for us what are your top three rules as an entrepreneur because you seem to have everything together you um, seems to be very organized I I give so if we were trying, so we you see Dave over there, look at Dave. Yeah, I see him. <laughs> what are, what would the, what's the advice you would give to someone like Dave if you're like, hey, this is how you're going to become even a more successful entrepreneur? Wow. What are some things you do? Because I know you mentioned earlier, you had um, a rule about checking your email on your phone. What are some other things yeah, you do? I mean, I. Do you lay out your day in advance? Not so much. I I mean I. Like I said earlier, I'm a man of faith. I grew up in a Christian home. That's been my anchor my whole life. Are the meals that Thunderbro does going to be kosher? <laughs> <laughs> Can, do you do? Have you ever done matzah in a meal? I have no. done a paleo uh, halibut gefilte fish oh. for a cedar. I did a cedar <laughs> dinner. A one cedar time. is yeah. also known as a seder. Seder. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Dave's over here saying Jewish food is amazing. Dave, every every girl I've dated is always like, "What's gefilte fish?" And I'm always like, "I think it's like a hot dog, but fish." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I mean, I guess to answer the question, yeah. like, like I keep God, I, I keep God. I say in my elbow room. Only one who's allowed in my elbow room is is him. Not you even know, the wife. Not even the wife, and oh. she's the same. And the challenge is that right now in the world, 99% of the people, the only th they keep God outside their elbow room and they let everything else in. Would you agree with that? Probably. Dave is right. very religious as well, yeah.
<laughs> yeah, and I think that Dave, I want to. That's why I want to sit down with you tomorrow, and, we'll, we'll, and we can get more into that. But I mean, even I, the stuff that's in here, I say, maybe maybe rule number one is seek righteousness, right? Depend regardless of who your God is or anything in your life, seek righteousness. What does that mean? Look it up and define that for yourself. But if you read the Bible, it says things like prosperity is the reward of the righteous, right? That has nothing to do with Jesus or anything. It's just wisdom in general. And I could go over these. He who sows righteousness reaps a sure reward. That's in your journal. Yeah. So you're just writing down things you remember, you think of, you write. I have, yeah, a lot of it. I mean, I have... I, I'm What's your favorite line from the Bible? Basically, I've read the book of Proverbs 12 times per year for the last decade. 12 times a year? Yeah. Every it's monthly. Year. Yep. So what's your favorite month. proverb? Ezekiel twenty five seventeen. <sighs> That's not a proverb. Oh. No. Path of the righteous man? <laughs> I mean, we have Proverbs eleven twenty five is um, a generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Oh, I like that. <laughs> but um first corinthians ten thirty one. that's a big one for us whether you eat or drink or whatever you do do it all for the glory of god and that's really that's really where it's at so rule number one is maybe all that stuff rule number two have an anchor routine what's your anchor routine most people leave it or they sail adrift when they travel do you agree with that? 100%. 100%, right? So an anchor routine, no matter what you're doing, do this thing. If you follow the rock, he has an anchor routine. No matter if he flies to Shanghai from France, the first thing he does is he goes to the gym and he works out. And that helps him with jet lag and it sets him straight, right? So We had an anchor routine today. <coughs> Dave tried to get three. Which sandwiches do you like? Um, <laughs> That's your anchor. Where is that at? Starbucks? Yeah, but they didn't have them. Oh, so Dave no good. ate nothing until we got here. It's really easy to get like that too. Like every single day. Yeah. It's be a great relationship. I think so. All right, so let's wrap it up. We got to get two. Moving. Last one would oh, be. Oh, you have one more. So you have righteousness, have an anchor. Never give up. So we have ran. Righteousness, anchor, never give up. I like it. So let's sum up our interview with Nick, Paleo Nick, Ice Age Meals. Let God in, and then right after you let God in, let some Ice Age Meals in. Boom, there it is. (laughs) Jason's always there with the pitches. He knows how to monetize every situation, right? (laughs) (laughs) All right, Nick. Well, thanks for telling us your story, and we look forward to it. Dude, this has been awesome, and like, like I said, we didn't plan this at all. We just kind of threw it together, and this is what came out. And I, I appreciate you guys coming. I look forward to the relationship. And like I say, I'll read you one if you want. I'll read you. I'll leave you guys with this. Yeah, because we've got to get to bed. We've got a 5.30 a.m. hot yoga class I've to get so, to. Right? I have so much stuff that I could leave you with. But um, the ones that I'll, the one I'll give Wh- you. While you're looking that up, Dave, did everybody survive the workout? Everybody did. I was very impressed. He was impressed. Yeah. They work out every day. They also only have a four hour or four day work week. Don't get any, any ideas, Nate. <laughs> yeah. Then why would they give up? And right, never give right, up. Right. Right. And that's the thing. Like the uh, just so you, I mean, these guys are. You guys are good at fitness and eating and. Wait, you say we're good at fitness and eating? Yeah. Is that the two <laughs> things? <laughs> 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 but the, but what these these guys you cannot outwork these guys their respect uh, each of their respectful jobs are you couldn't touch them you could not touch them I, and I like they love what they do we always say love is our first ingredient and like it really is I can so. taste it 
But okay, you ready for my quote? It's a trickle we'll down close effect. This out. Before we close it down. Because this is a message for you guys, too. I want to hear ready? it, but just no, wait, wait. This is a trickle down effect. That doesn't happen by accident. You created that. So congrats to you, you for what you've created here. Take it out. Thank you. It goes like this. Stephen Grellett said this, I shall pass through this world but once. Any good, therefore, that I can do or any kindness I can show to any human being, let me do it now. Let me not defer it or neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. Every opportunity is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. The circumstances will never be the same again. So that's my encouragement to you guys. Jason, thanks so much. You've been bomb diggity. Hopefully well, we don't get sued by ABC. This is certainly a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for us, but hopefully it turns into more than once-in-a-lifetime. We're having a great time here. Yep. Thunder Bro, Ice Age Meals, um, they're ready when you are. Exactly. Get out there, check them out. You guys, until next time, we're taking it out. Jason Ackerman, you're the man, bro. Thanks for listening to Best Hour of Their Day. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast let me explain. First of all, it's free. How cool is that? There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, so it becomes super simple. Some of these episodes with Fern or Todd or myself chatting with one another, we've done right within the app itself. Anchor will make it easy to distribute your podcast to all platforms, Spotify, Apple, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make an awesome podcast in one place. All you have to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Come on, who doesn't have Spotify at this point? And if you were unaware, Spotify now is offering podcast. That's right. On Spotify, you can listen to all your favorite artists, but also podcasts in one place for free. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you're listening to right now, best hour of their day. On Spotify, you can follow your favorite podcasts so you never miss an episode. Premium users can even download episodes to listen to offline wherever you are something I always do before I hop on a plane. And you can even easily share what you're listening to with your friends on Instagram and other social media platforms. Here's the deal. If you haven't done so already, be sure to download the Spotify app, search for best hour of their day on Spotify, or browse some other podcasts if you want. You can find them in your library tab. And also make sure to follow me so you never miss an episode of best hour of their day. Thanks again for listening to Best Hour of Their Day. And thanks again to our special guest. We appreciate all you guys do for us with Best Hour of Their Day when it comes to sharing our posts on Instagram, when it comes to subscribing to us on YouTube, when it comes to the constant feedback. We are grateful and we appreciate it. We are trying to build a community based on coaching development and becoming the best version of yourself. And it goes without saying that we couldn't do without all of you. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Season one of Dropping In is out. We are getting tremendous feedback and we'd love for you to check it out. Leave us a comment on there. Head over to our Instagram, give us a follow, like our pictures, feel free to share anything that resonates with you. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or feedback for us, Please don't hesitate. Email us best hour of their day at gmail.com. Thanks again. Until the next episode, we hope you've had the best hour of your day.